Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are again at When We Feel Like It O'Clock. I hope it's when you feel like it. Why else would you be doing this? Maybe you're having a rum o'clock. Or maybe it's just after nap o'clock. But it's When We Feel Like It O'Clock. And I'm Pearl of Wisdom. And you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. As you can tell here up on the screen, we have ourselves some Buffalo Sabres from Cap Friendly, don't we? Absolutely. I'd like to also thank you. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for, oh, I just got a message from uh, John from Off the Wall Hockey. Uh, about uh, We're going to be doing a collaboration about all this free agency stuff. If you don't know him, he's fantastic. Uh, we're just working out of time. Uh, thank you for subscribing and your subscriptions will, uh, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklaces are being sent out to you in your, uh, in the Pearlocopters by uh, Melissa and Hernandez. They're, they're very happy to do that for you. And thank you again for all your letters. We have a letter here from uh, Trudy Bonenheim from uh, Carolina asking, what is that? Is that Raleigh? Raleigh, North Carolina. Nice. Asking, uh, what do you think of the Hall trade? Everybody's all, not Hall trade, Hall signing, not trade. And uh, everybody's all a flutter. I got letters and letters and letters this morning about the Hall signing and all of that. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to tell you, my friends, I really like this signing. I thought this was absolutely fantastic. And Mr. Kevin Adams, everybody kaffawed. Oh, Kevin Adams, He's uh, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just some ex-player, and he's just a young guy. They really need somebody experienced there and all that stuff like that. And it could turn out still to be correct. But <laughs> I really love what he has done so far. Um, we're not just going to go over the Hall trade. We're going to go over a few other things as well with the Buffalo Sabres here and what they've done and uh, what they may do. Um, but let me say right off the get-go, Kevin Adams went in there with a mandate to improve this team right away. This team is not looking to continue on rebuilding slowly, obviously. But he also did so, as seems to be doing so, in a way that is somewhat cautious and covering his behind while he does so. And I think this is a fantastic idea. First of all, Kruger, their, co their coach, I know as um, he was a coach at for the Edmonton Oilers, who is where I'm from in Alberta and also my one of my teams. I'm a Philadelphia and Oilers, Flyers and Oilers fan. Um, he is a fantastic coach and I was like flabbergasted when he was let go as an Oiler. I sometimes wonder if he was let go as much as he decided to leave, to tell you the honest truth. But anyways... Taylor Hall, the uh, aforementioned Taylor Hall, has signed a one-year deal at $8 million for one year, uh, who said that, this fellow said that uh, he would like, he was willing to go to a contender for $8 million for a one-year deal, if that made sense. Now, on the surface, it looks like he just went for the money here. There's probably other contenders out there that would have paid him a one-year deal but wouldn't be able to pay him $8 million to be able to go play for them, such as, say, uh, the Boston Bruins were uh, rumored. And uh, I don't know about Colorado, or maybe that Colorado didn't even want, but Boston Bruins were certainly rumored. But at $8 million, they probably wouldn't have been able to afford it. Maybe like at six and a half. If you look at my previous video that I talk about free agency, I mentioned that. We're going to see if he really wants to go to a contender or if he wants to go for our money. But now, that being said, I'm going to give Taylor Hall a little bit of a credit here. Uh, I'm going to give him a little bit of a, a push because um, he did say he wants to go to a contender or some like in the sense of somebody who wants to win now. Okay, who wants to win every year? He wants to go. He doesn't want to go to a team that that wants to be rebuilding. And that is, he's finding here in Buffalo. That is not a team that he wants to rebuild. Not to mention, he takes a one year. He sees if he clicks with no other than Jack Eichel, right? Like, if we can click with Jack Eichel, that might work out all right. Uh, he gets to be able to pad his stats like crazy if he heads off somewhere else, makes more money, 
And if not, if it, if it clicks and it works, and you can go with Eichel, I, I guess you're looking at this. Here's Jack Eichel. Uh, and uh, let's look at the depth chart. First of all, let's look. They got 13 million left, by the way, in current cap space. So we'll look at that. It will take that'll come in handy as we talk about this. Uh, these moves that they're to, they've done here. Let's look at the depth chart. This is on Cap Friendly, by the way. Cap Friendly, it's the best. There, I said it. Uh, Taylor Hall, Jack Eichel, and Sam Reinhart cap friendly puts up here as a possibility of a combination. I have a feeling that maybe Olufsen goes up there, but you can mix and match. Um, I just have a feeling that Reinhardt would work well with Stahl and Skinner. Um, on the other hand, Olufsen is a shooter and Skinner is a passer and Stahl can do both. So it'll be interesting. One thing I do like in interesting about this on a side note. Picking up Eric Stahl from the Minnesota Wild, um, who I thought possibly may just retire, but it turns out he is going to go there, is interesting because Skinner has been a problem child everywhere he's been. Uh, and one of those things, he, or the only other place he's been, has been Carolina. And they were trying to get rid of him for years for reasons nobody really knows. But after receiving his nine million dollar contract until 2027 he went back to poop again so i'm thinking that uh you know character may be an issue so they bring in eric stahl who worked with played with jeff skinner in carolina which is interesting. They must be thinking that they can, maybe Eric can get the best out of them, as at times they must have in Carolina, although obviously overall they still had a problem. But should be interesting to see how that works out. Anyways, Jack Eichel, Taylor Hall, Sam Reinhardt, fantastic first line. Now, Here's where we get, we get then, then you get down into Zemgus Gergensen's Cody Eakin. I have a feeling they're going to try to switch, match and uh, match Casey Middlestad here. Uh, Cody Eakin was an interesting signing. He only got, he got 2.25 for two years. Um, however, he has been on the decline. However, Casey Middlestad, it seems that the team has decided that he's going to be more of a third line center. And I think they brought in a guy like Cody Eakin for the purpose of mentoring Cody Middlestad on the finer points of both sides of the game. So they'll probably mix and match with each other and work with each other. And I think that's a darn good signing, although a little on the expensive side for a declining Cody Eakin. Um, again, we see that they have 14 million in cap space. So, I really like these moves in the sense that I love to see a team being aggressive and trying to win as they're improving. I also love to see Kevin Adams making moves that isn't that aren't going to kill him in the end, like seven years from now or five years from now. He makes a move, sees he gets to see if it works, because Taylor Hall has had some issues with working with centers and uh, there's been rumblings about problems in the room and all that kind of stuff like that. So you can see how it works. If everything is working, everything is fitting in, we can work on a bigger deal for Taylor Hall. So let's get into our future here uh, with this whole team now. Does this make them a Stanley, uh, a playoff contender? Sort of, I think it does. Now remember, they have $14 million of room here. There are two big things that still haven't been solved and are probably ultimately what the main problem was. Rasmus Dahlin is a number one for sure. He's got to be re-signed in another year. Rasmus Ristolainen, on the other hand, has struggled mightily for what he does. There's been a lot of talk about trade for him, trades for him and trying to move him out. And this really lies the problem. I think ultimately, Yoki Haru is probably their number two right winger and risks line and should be down here maybe even down here honestly with the way he's played a little while jake mccabe okay solid top four is fine it's okay maybe not a top four in all great teams but isn't bad 
But when you're getting in Colin Miller and Brandon Montour, this is a pretty soft defense and one that struggles with the puck more often than it needs should um, in the defensive end. This is where the difficulty is. Now we have $14 million and also we have Linus Allmark who is, it's up in the air whether this is a number one goaltender and I really don't think it is. I think this is where they really need to solve an issue. Um, problem is, after all this free agency stuff, there isn't much for goaltenders out there. I would have liked to have seen them get Crawford, but who knows, maybe they tried. Um, this is difficult, and hopefully throughout the year they're able to solve this problem unless Linus goes right out. I think they're giving him one more chance, he's got a short rope, and if it doesn't work out, they'll go out and get a goaltender. Here is where they have something that they can do, I believe. Tampa Bay is screwed up against the cap. Uh, let me do. I, can I look up Tampa Bay here for you real quick? Screwed up against the cap. They are in this situation where they have only nine million dollars in cap space. They have to sign. I don't know if you already know this, but if you don't, Anthony Sorelli is going to cost them four to five million. Eric Chernak is going to cost them at least three and a half to four, and Sergachev. Uh, yeah, they're probably going to give them a bridge deal, but that bridge has got to be five. They are going to have to move somebody. Now, they were talking about moving guys like Kalorn. They put Tyler Johnson on waivers. That didn't work. Does, is anybody going to want to take them? They're going to have to take money back. It's going. It's pretty much a cluster, you know what, here. in. Uh, so what I would be doing if I were them, with Iowa Buffalo is we will go back to the Buffalo Sabres and we will notice that if we go to here, they have the first and second round next year. Well, we've already went all in, haven't we? <laughs> we've really kind of pushed it right now. They need a defenseman really bad. I would offer up that first for Chernock at least. Uh, maybe a little more. I would try not to do much more than that. Um, another thing that's not mentioned here is Dylan Cozens should be playing in a lineup next year, possibly. He would be, uh, that gives them a, lot, a little more depth as we look at their depth chart again. Dylan Cozens should be, oh, shoot, here we go. Uh, depth chart, sorry. That Dylan Cozens can fit in here all over the place. Ta Ta if Tage Thompson isn't ready, you can put him in there. Uh, Kyla Pozo, I mean, you can pretty much sit the guy. I, I, he doesn't really do much at $6 million a year anymore. If you could get rid of that contract, that would be great. But, I mean, that's going to be fantastic for them. As far as defensive prospects are concerned, there's nothing really on the horizon that can help them. So, I would give up maybe one of your prospects here. Uh, your 2000, Ryan Johnson would be a good example. Uh, that would be two first round draft picks for Chernak. Uh, right, um, if you have to even go that high. Let's hope you don't have to go that high. First and a fourth or something like that. They're up against it. So, they're really going to have to be happy that you didn't like give them a. Uh, uh, Possibly, you they could look at saying, okay, no, no, you give them an offer sheet at eight million, and you give your first, second, and third. I would consider that for Chernak, honestly. I really think he's that good. He could definitely take Rasmus Ristolainen's role here. Then throughout the year, you can look at maybe moving Risto for something different. But as it stands right now, he would be down here. I feel much more comfortable with Rasmus down here. Brandon Montour can be the, the, the seventh, and you've got yourself Chernak and Rasmus Dahlin as your one, two. Now you're looking at a possible playoff team here with this lineup, for sure. Just with that one acquisition, it's really what they need. And then throughout the year, you look for a goaltender if it looks like Linus Olmark isn't going to be able to be what you need. Um, but they are in much better position to make the playoffs now than they were with that signing. And I think it's a fantastic move. In fact, I think everything he's done. Like I said, Eric Stahl hopefully gets the best out of Jeff Skinner. And then you've got two solid lines. Jeff Skinner has got to get his head out of his ass. So that guy's got to play the way Jeff Skinner can play. 
As soon as he got the money, he stopped going in the zones where he gets his 40 goals from. All of a sudden, now he doesn't want to get any more boo-boos. So Eric Stahl hopefully can push him into that spot, say whatever he needs to say to get him to do it. And the Buffalo Sabres could very well be playoff bound. Well, that's my full 42%, boys and girls. I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit of a little bit of Vegas here soon. It's Peter Angel. Everybody's going to want to talk about that. And some Vancouver as well. So stay on the edge of your seats. Thanks to you for the subscriptions. Remember our Patreon. We're bringing, we're kicking butt again over there with our baseball, football, and tennis picks, especially. Uh, just go to the Patreon app. Easy to download. Look up BPOW Picks and also Steel Flyers website. Pretty fantastic. Have a great day, everyone, and lots of love to you.